tough assignment for Drogheda, who faced the 1978 European Cup finals at Tala on Thursday. And Malmo's young side carved Drogheda apart in the early exchange, but Gavin Brennan saw the danger. The Swedish side lay second in their league before Thursday night's game against Drogheda, and with a better side in the opening minutes, their captain Hammond with the cross. David Cassidy couldn't quite deal with it, and their number six, Marcus Halsty, flashed a shot over. But full credit to Drogheda, who weathered that opening spell of dominance by Malmo, and they gradually got into the game. Peter Hines fed Cassidy, whose effort ricocheted off the Malmo keeper before Portis Janssen cleared the danger. Drogheda had then claims for a penalty waved away. Michael Daly's long ball. Derek Prandegast set up Cassidy, who tumbled in the area. But the Bosnian referee wasn't impressed. Cassidy, though, may well have had a case. Gavin Brennan continued to be a big influence in the game. The angle, though, was just too tight for this effort, and Johan Dallin saved at his near post before getting involved with Hines. But nil-nil at half-time. Gavin Brennan showed why he's one of the league's top-rated players as he's earned his side a free kick. It's brother Ryan that got involved. It was booked for dissent. It was a yellow card that would come back to haunt him later in the game. Cassidy's free kick was then floated towards the back post where Alan Byrne met it, but his header landed on the roof of the net. This was the best passing movement of the evening as Drogheda showed their more illustrious opponents little respect. Fine control from Gary O'Neill brought in Michael Daly, who crossed, but Paul O'Connor's touch just let him down at the vital moment, and the chance was gone. Drogheda were then reduced to ten players just after the hour mark, and it came from their own corner initially. Malmo's diminutive forward, Tequilo Ranti, broke out with the ball and was chased down by Ryan Brennan, before Ranti was pulled back by the United number 8. The referee then showed Brennan a second yellow before discovering he had also given an earlier card, and Drogheda were down to ten. It was all hands to the pump now for Drogheda. Sava had to be alert, getting there to block from Halsty. Alan Byrne knocked the ball clear, but the danger wasn't over, as Marcus Eriksson's shot was saved low down by Sava. In the dying moments, Hamid showed some neat footwork in the area, getting around Prendergast, but Alan McNally was able to divert the ball into Sava's hands. A fine, incredible nil-nil draw for Drogheda United. Won't be easy in the second leg, but at least they have something to work on. Well, St. Pat's Europa Test saw them travel away to Lithuanian champions Zalgiris of Vilnius. And they got off to a bad start when Pavel Kamilov struck for the home side in the 23rd minute. Excellent finish by Kamilov, but not the goal of the game by any stretch of the imagination. So Pats went in at the break, a goal down, but they hit back 10 minutes after half time. Conan Byrne nicking the equaliser for the League of Ireland club. Not the best of celebrations, but you have to say... A decent finish by Conan Byrne getting St. Pat's right back into the game. But they weren't level for long. Zalgiris star striker Kamil Belinsky put the Lithuanian league leaders ahead once more. 2-1 to the Lithuanian side. And the celebration uh, not going well for the Lithuanian striker either. But they were 2-1 up and time was running out for Liam Buckley's men. But here comes the goal of the game. What a super strike from Ger O'Brien in the 86th minute, and that put them back on level terms again, and of course, it gave them a crucial away goal. Wonderful finish by Ger O'Brien, his first of the season, we believe. Pats in the driving seat for the second leg at Inchicore this Thursday. So, great result for St. Patrick's Athletic. Two away goals could be very, very important indeed. But uh, first of all, Liam, we're going to look at the Drogheda game against Malmo, a big club. And Drogheda may be a little unlucky not to get something out of it, because... We think they were denied a penalty, maybe a little home bias here, but we're going to have a look at the incident again. And also, the sending off of Ryan Brennan was pretty harsh. Well, it was harsh. I think the, the, it's a definite penalty, there's no doubt about it. David Cassidy does well. It's a flick on here with Hines. Plays a 1-2. And uh, Cassidy's gone, and he's gone to get it. And you can just see the defender is just hung his leg out. But the referee's standing right beside him. You can just yeah. see it here now, and the better the, the leg goes. And Cassidy goes over. It's a definite penalty. And uh, this is a, the first book in here from Ryan Brennan. It's... He's getting involved in that. His brother's been brought down, and uh, he's obviously said something to the referee. He's got booked, and uh, as, uh, here it comes back to haunt him. Here, Ranty runs away with it, just just turns him, 
and Ryan just gets caught. But it's hard to say whether he's even touched him there. But I think that's the European football fee. You know, they're, they're clever uh, when, they're, when they see things like that and they're going to go down easily. And the referee obviously thought he pulled them back. Yeah, a little bit harsh considering some of the challenges that we see uh, not, not picking up a yellow card. Well, we, well, we, we watched it for five minutes trying to see where, where the contact was. But obviously because of his motion, the way he's gone down, the referee's at a bad angle. Obviously thinks he's pulled him back and um, he's probably thinking he's left with no option, but they show me a yellow card. Yeah. Pat, as John mentioned in his report, it's going to be difficult for Drogheda going away to Malmo to try and get something out of the game. But I suppose the good thing is they prevented Malmo getting an away goal. So there is a chance for them. Yeah, if, if you you play them over 90 minutes, I mean, in some respects, it was an away game having to play on Shamrock Rovers ground. So, you know, if they're organised, I think the key is to try and keep the game in Sweden scoreless for as long as possible. There will be an expectation. Uh, I remember when I managed against Malmo and we beat them in the first leg and, you know, there was a lot of arrogance there and they certainly thought they'd, they'd, they'd you know, walk all over us in the second leg and that didn't happen and we managed to win that one as well. So um, I think it should be difficult for them. Um, uh, yeah. You know, I think it could be a very important save, though, by Gabriel Sava late on. But we talk about European football, that's... That's Bosnian referees. I mean, they're great footballers in Bosnia, but I don't know where they get these refs from. <laughs> I came, I came across like a few of them. Towards the Irish team, you reckon? <laughs> Definite penner. <laughs> it certainly looked that way. Uh, what about the, uh, the, I mean, the, the goal of the night on Thursday came from a St. Patrick's athletic player. There's no doubt about that. We've sung Joe O'Brien's praises for his full back play, but this is quite a finish. Yeah, he's just a fantastic player. You take Joe, he's such a, you know, his club, are, his family are steeped in the football club. He really yeah, yeah. has been a, a Pats man all his life. And I was listening to Coleman Hanley actually interviewing Liam Buckley after the game. And he, he was talking about Liam, how, how all season he's been encouraging Jer because in training, you know, Jer is one of the best in terms of long range shooting and just such an important goal for Pats. Strong favourites yeah. now in the second leg. It's not going to be easy, but yeah. to come back on a plastic pitch, alien environment, in the middle of a, a, a league campaign where they're overachieving, to, to come back from you know being a goal down twice in the game, heroic performance. Yeah, and I suppose Liam Buckley will want as many down at Richmond Park on Thursday night, Liam, to, to give the boys as much support as possible. Oh, without a doubt, I think it's a great result for for Pat, you know, and uh, Gerald Bryan. Like it's great skill, great technique. Yeah, and it gives them a, gives them a chance to progress as well too. Like and as Pat says, you know. Probably not thinking they were going to be challenging for a league title this season, but they're sitting at the top, going well in Europe, so a good result could set them off the rest of the season. Yeah, certainly have every chance, and we wish St. Pat's the very best on Thursday night, as we do to draw the United in their away leg against Malmo. Now, back to league action, and last Monday, Cork City were dumped out of the EA Sports Cup by draw the United, and on Friday, they faced a difficult home game against the champions and current title holders, Sligo Rovers.